the following question reads uh, that we need to state the Newton's third law of motion. Now, this third law states that force on body A by body B, if two uh, bodies are colliding, or not colliding, even if they are at rest, a force on body A is equal and opposite in direction to force on body B by body A. So, if, you're, if you have a collision uh, happening, then this law states that for every action or every force in nature, there is an equal and opposite reaction force. Let's now move to the next part of the question, which is uh, part B, a block X of mass MX slides in a straight line across a horizontal frictionless surface as shown in the diagram. So here's your uh, X and it, uh, velocity is also given. It's 5V and there is a uh, mass, another object MY. Uh, so the question then goes on to state that the block X moving with a speed 5V collides head on with a stationary block of Y of mass m y the two blocks stick together and then move with common speed v as shown so the two blocks after collisions they uh, they unite they become one and they move together use the conservation of momentum to show that the mass a ratio m y over m x is equal to four now the first thing i'm going to state is the law of conservation of momentum so this law states that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum so that's what we're going to do we're going to find the initial momentum first which over here is uh, mass into velocity it's going to be mx into 5v and this object is stationary so it's my into zero the velocity is zero so that over here is your initial momentum and your final momentum is uh, now the two objects have become one so that means uh, the new mass of the new object over here which is moving with a velocity of v is mx plus my and they're moving together so it's mass into velocity so it's going to be v Velocity given is V. And I'm going to equate the two values. Uh, so let's equate them. It's going to be MX uh, 5V. So MX into 5V is equal to MX plus MY into V. And we can open this up. It's going to be MX V plus MY V. Now they had specifically asked us to give uh, the ratio of uh, MY over MX. So, so I'm going to take the mx terms together so i'm going to bring this mx to the other side so it's going to become if i take mx as common not common it's going to be uh it's going to be mx let's do that do the working so this is uh 5 mxv minus mxv that's going to give me 4 mxv and you have myv over here uh now i'm going to take mx to the other side and i'm going to divide both sides by v so this v gets cancelled out this v gets cancelled out so so my answer comes out to be equal to 4 and that is going to be the uh, answer to this question now the next part of the question is we need to figure out the ratio of the total kinetic energy of x and y after collisions and total kinetic energy of x and y before collision so i'm going to do the working uh, over there uh, now the kinetic energy the formula of kinetic energy is half, half mv square so it's going to be half uh, mx into 5v and it's going to be squared so that's uh, that's the formula of uh, kinetic energy the kinetic energy of this object is uh, is zero why because uh, the object is not moving uh let's calculate the kinetic energy of this when they come when they combine after collision so it's going to be half into mass is mx plus my so it's mx plus my that's the total mass into v squared so the velocity is v so it's going to be v squared and we're going to equate the two things so it's half mx 5 v squared so here's uh, the end result. It's the total kinetic energy of X and Y uh, after collision. It's uh, the total masses have uh, become together. They're sticking now. MX plus MY into V squared divided by half MX by B squared. And I'm going to open up uh, open up this. Uh, so it's going to be the half is going to this half term is going to get cancelled out. So remove that first. It's MX V squared at the top plus MY V squared at the top. And at the bottom side, I have MX. Uh, v squared, 5 squared would become 25. So it's going to be 25 over here. Now we're also going to use uh, the previous relationship that we found out, which was that uh, we found out that uh, my over mx is equal to 4. So let's take that relationship and I'm going to put, I'm going to substitute my. My would be, using this relationship, my would be 4 times mx. So let's uh, use this and substitute this. So my would be, I'm going to get rid of this. It's going to be 4 m 4 mx so i'm going to substitute uh, the value of my over here based on the previous uh, working that we did and if i do that uh, the top now becomes uh, let's add this up it's going to be mx 
v squared plus 4 mx v squared. So it's going to be 5 mx v squared at the top and at the bottom I'm going to have 25 mx v squared. And the answer that I'm going to get uh, for this is uh, all of this is going to get cancelled out. It's going to be 5 divided by 25 or it's going to be 1 divided by 5 and this gives me 0 0.2. That is the ratio of the kinetic energies. Moving to the next part of the question, you're being asked to state the value of the ratio for a perfectly elastic collision. Now, for a perfectly elastic collision, the kinetic energy before collision and the kinetic energy after collision, it's equal. So, if both are equal, so the ratio is going to come out to be 1. So, that's for a perfectly elastic collision. So, the working that we did over here, uh, the kinetic energy that was before collision, after collision, and before collision, that was not coming out to be equal. It was coming out to be 0 0.2. So this is definitely not an elastic collision. Now the next part of the question is uh, the variation with time t of the momentum of blocks x, uh, block x in B is shown in figure 3.3. So this is the graph of the momentum of block x. So initially it had a higher momentum and as time went by, uh, the momentum changed and it slowed down. Uh, there was lesser momentum. And this is the point where probably collision is happening because momentum is changing. Now the question is block X makes contact with block Y at time T is equal to 20 milliseconds. So that's already given away here. Uh, previously, if you if we go back and have a look what's happening, uh, initially there was block X that was traveling. So it had some momentum, uh, a large amount of momentum. It then hit the mass over here and it slowed down. When it slowed down, it was traveling at a slower speed. And if it was traveling at a slower speed, uh, uh, if the speed decreases, uh, momentum of block X would decrease because momentum is mass into velocity. So, and there's going to be a point where momentum changes. Initially, there's going to be high momentum and boom, there's a collision and the momentum decreases. So let's uh, go back and uh, read the question. Now, block X makes contact with block Y at time T is equal to 20 milliseconds. Describe qualitatively the magnitude and direction of the resultant force, if any, acting on block X in the time interval T is equal to 0 to T is equal to 20 milliseconds. So that's before collision. So the block is initially moving in a straight line along a frictionless horizontal surface. So the block is moving initially. There's no collision. So before collision, we have to comment. And we have to figure out uh, qualitatively. Remember, uh, no working is needed, just guesswork, qualitatively. And we have to comment on the resultant force. So the resultant force over here is zero. So resultant force is zero. Uh, what is force? Force is change in momentum with respect to time. Whenever momentum changes with respect to time, uh, the rate of change of momentum is force. So if we if we look at the graph only, so initially uh, before time t is equal to 20, the momentum is not changing, it's constant. So that means uh, the gradient of this graph is basically force. Uh, so initially momentum is not changing, so that means it's traveling w in, a, in a constant velocity. Velocity is not changing, uh, which means if velocity is not changing, uh, there's no acceleration or deceleration. Uh, hence, the force is going to remain constant. And then... Uh, between t is equal to 20 and 40 milliseconds, uh, what's happening is that the object slows down. The momentum is constantly decreasing. And remember, it's a constant. If, if the gradient is constant, so it's a, it's a constant gradient that indicates to quite an extent uh, that force is constant. And since the force is decreasing, uh, because it's a negative gradient, that indicates the force is in the opposite direction to momentum. So we're going to comment on that. Uh, we're going to say, so we're going to say that the, that it's a constant force and direction of force is opposite opposite to velocity since uh, momentum is constantly decreasing. Moving to the next part of the question, which states, uh, and this is probably on Figure Three, sketch the variation of the moment uh, of the momentum of block y with time t from t is equal to zero to t is equal to sixty milliseconds. So now remember we're talking about block Y. So we're talking about block Y, let's go back uh, and look at the graph. Now initially, I'm gonna draw a straight line first. So initially over here, block Y is at rest. Go back to the diagram, have a look at the diagram. So right at the beginning, 
block Y wasn't moving at all. So block Y was initially at rest. And then what happens after collision, block Y is traveling with the same speed as uh, and with the same velocity as block X. Now they're traveling at the same velocity, but the mass is different. This is MX. So this is MX into V. This over here would be MY into V. And we also know the relationship between MX and MY. We figured, out it, figured it out somewhere in the previous steps. Uh, over here, look over here. MY is four times MX. I'm going to write that down clearly. It's four times MX. So if the velocity is the same for MX as well as MY after collision, the momentum of MY is going to be four times larger. So it's going to be four times larger. So if I'm, if I'm going to sketch on the graph, uh, then it's going to be four times larger. Uh, so it's this over here is the final momentum of uh, block X. So block Y would be four times, that's double. Then uh, so it's probably going to end up over here, four times larger. So I'm going to draw a line now. And here's my line, the momentum increases for block Y because it was initially at rest and then it starts moving. The velocity of both objects, X and Y, uh, this is Y and this is X, the velocity of both objects is exactly the same. Uh, the momentum is different, Y, because uh, because we initially developed a relationship which is that MY was four times MX. So hence, this is going to be your final uh, sketch for for MY. And remember, uh, momentum for MY is increasing. Uh, why is it increasing? Because uh, its speed is increasing. It was initially at rest and then it started to increase. And it, it had a greater momentum finally at the end compared to X, four times greater. They had the same velocity, but MY was four times heavier. So hence, the momentum was four times greater.